Christian friend and we always have discussions on uh, Islam and Christianity and whenever we have a discussion on the Bible, she always tells me that if you say the Bible has been changed by people and is not the exact true word, then how come I get so much of peace when I read the Bible? She says that when she reads it, she feels closer to God. How do I counter this question? But when you start to criticize the Bible, you got a problem. you got a real big problem. Because the very beginning of this book right here, when it tells you, there's no doubt in this book, it's a source of Hidayah for those that have taqwa for Allah. And then it continues to tell you, but it's only going to be for those that have the taqwa for Allah. Then they have to believe in the ghaib, the unseen. They have to establish regular worship. They have to pay their zakah. Then they have to believe that this is coming down to Muhammad and Sallallahu And they have to believe in the book that came before. Then at the end of the same surah, it's telling you that these people, they say, those that are on the right belief, we believe in Allah. wa katubihi wa rasuli. And that Qutubihi means his books or book. And you have, to, you have to understand that the Bible really was from Allah. Oops. Oops. Peace of Christ to all. Uh, in here we see how much stupid the idea of Islam when they say the Bible is corrupted. You know, simply the whole accusation of the Bible is corrupted for one reason. Do you know what? Forget about anything else. They have one thing only. Just because Muhammad, he, wanted, he said to them, my name is written there and it's not showing. It's corrupted. This is the whole idea. And in here, we ask ourselves a very easy question. How a Muslim, he believed that his Allah book is corrupted. He is not saying our book is corrupted. Remember, always you need to remind people in here. We just heard him saying that this is the book of Allah. This is a book sent from Allah. So the book of who is corrupted? It is the book of Allah, which means Allah is corrupted. Because if I can corrupt your book, I can corrupt you too. Because what Allah is without his book? Nothing. What do you know about Allah? Anything? What do you know about him except his book? Nothing. Did you ever Muslims see Allah? No. So what do you saw from Allah? His books. And his book corrupted. And the funny in here, Allah he sent 124,000 prophets. Guys, look at the number. 124,000 prophets. All of them, they are prophets of Allah. All of them, their books is corrupted. All of them, their books is not exist no more. All of them, their books disappear. All of them, not even one word from their work or what they gave us is exist. And the proof, I change any Muslim to show me one word is exist from all those prophets. Nothing. And after 124,000 prophets Allah he sent, there is one prophet Allah he'd like to keep his word with him. Look at this funny, dummy story. God sent 124,000 prophets. All of them, he don't care about him sending them and somebody corrupting their books. Who care? Like, you know, what a big deal. 124,000. But Muhammad, Allah, he cared to protect his book only. And then we ask ourselves a very easy question. Why? Why Allah did not protect any of his books from the 124,000s and he protect only one simply because Allah is a lie and there is, he never sent 124,000s and it's a piece of garbage and the funny if you listen to this guy you will see him saying the following so if I criticize even what maybe one or two words are still there from Allah I would be criticizing Allah's word it's not a good idea I don't see that as being a good challenge to attack it because a lot of what I understand today I got from the Bible and I found clarification and confirmation in the Quran in fact I continued my studies of the Bible in the Greek and in the Hebrew for two and a half more years after I was a Muslim I didn't stop until I completed my degree in because I I just 
had something inside of me knowing that I, there's something here. And it finally came to me, and then I was able to put the Bible down and relax. I found out there really is no contradiction in the Bible, except where it contradicts itself. Duh. <laughs> and when I realized that, I said, then the only way I'm going to understand the Bible is to go to the book without the contradiction. And it says in here about the unbelievers, haven't they considered if it was from other than a law, they'll find within it many contradictions. I challenge this man, if anybody can contact him, to debate me, live debate. And I promise to show in one debate in less than two hours more than 100 contradictions from the Quran alone. At least, the number is a lot bigger. But in two hours, I can show them and explain them. As an example, just one of the video I posted before, two days ago, showed you how one verse in the Quran says that Allah He created the sky first, and another verse saying that Allah He created the earth first. And when they asked Muhammad what was created before, or in the beginning, how Allah He created the universe, He said there was nothing exists except Allah Himself and His throne was on the top of the water. When the Quran says that the water created long after Allah he created the earth. The Quran is full of lies and contradiction. The sperm of women coming from her ribs. One verse says to us that Allah he forgive and one verse saying to us Allah don't forgive. One says to us Allah forget one verse say Allah don't forget. One verse says to us, Allah is not a son of anyone, and he have no sons. At the same time saying to Allah, Allah never have a girlfriend. Why he don't have a son? Because he never have a girlfriend. This is telling us how dummy is the one who wrote the book. Because who care if he have a girlfriend or not? One says to us how you worship a man, how you, how you say that Jesus is your God, because he's a man. And one says to us, that Allah himself is a leg. So what the difference between someone is a man and somebody have a body of a man? Or a body, or if, if the Muslims will say the leg of Allah is not a leg of a man, maybe a leg of a goat. It doesn't matter. He is a body. It's a book of contradiction. Go ahead, find one. Go ahead. There's a clear contradiction here. I want you to listen real close to this contradiction. God is not a man. God is not the son of man. You hear that? Now that sounds like I'm reading out of Surah Ikhlas, doesn't it? Huh? Lam yadid wa lam yulad. It sounds like that, doesn't it? God is not a man. And God is not the son of man. That's in the Bible. That's in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. I know you want to write that down for your Christian friend. <laughs> Go and show him it's in the Old Testament. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. Then take them up to the New Testament. In Luke chapter, what, 3, chapter 3, last verse, 38. Not much time left. Let us show you the verse and show you how the Muslims do lie. This is the verse. It says, God is not a man. And who is a Christian who believes that God is a man? Jesus Christ is the word of God, and the word of God became a man. He is not a man. If you go to the verse in there, the one he is talking about, this is talking about how Adam, he is coming from where, who is the origin of everything, who is the father of Adam? When we say son, Adam is a son of God, it doesn't mean that God is his father. It means he is from the father. He is the one who created him. You see, this is a contradiction in the Bible. I am a son of God too. Every Christian, Christian is a child of God because who is the one who created us? We are the children of God. And because He is the provider, He is the one who take care of us, He is our Father. This is why when we pray, we say, Our Father, art of heaven. But does it mean that God, He have sex with my mother and I am His son? You see how they switch the word upside down? Do you see how they try to fool you? You see how they try to lie? But their God who is a leg is fine for them. They have no problem with it. At the same time, this is the Quran, this is chapter 32, verse number 7, and there is many of them. It says it clearly that Adam, he is from the Spirit of Allah. So even Adam is part of the Spirit of Allah. So how you say, who is the father of this Spirit? From where this Spirit is coming? It is from God. 
it's a metaphor meaning it doesn't mean that this is really his son from having sex with his mother. Who is the provider for your family? The father of the house. Who is the provider of the earth? Is God. He is our father. He is the one who takes care of his children. We are his children. And this is why we are different from animals. He promised us that we can go to his house, to his kingdom. Why? Because we are his children. If you are not his children, why he wants you to be there? Oh, because we are his slaves. Well, the goats is his slave too. The rocks is his slaves. The cockroaches is his slaves. And the mosquitoes is his slaves. All of them, they are Muslims, according to the Quran, as Surah Al-Anfal says, and they will be in heaven of Allah.